Hello everyone, Trainmaster04 here again, and welcome back to my desk. And this time, I thought I'd do something a little different, and that is showing you my pocket watch collection. Something that I have collected since I was a little boy as a toddler, and now showing it to you all in the modern day. Union Pacific 4014, do you read me? Over. Roger that. Union Pacific 4014, I copy that. Over. As you can see, I have a wide variety of pocket watches, ranging from something that you would see quite definitely in a pawn shop or even at your local Walmart, all the way up to something that is a little bit more sophisticated and unique. So, without further ado, let's get into it. To start off, the first pocket watch that I'm going to take a look at is actually the very first pocket watch that I ever owned, and it is this little gem. Starting off with the very first pocket watch that I ever owned, and it is a Coleman Nightside quartz operated pocket watch from made from Japan. Interesting thing enough, looking at some history at this little darling right here, Coleman actually still makes some form of fashion of this watch. And really, in reality, this was actually quite a interesting workhorse of a pocket watch. It has some form of fashion of a compass around the circumference. The face of the watch can be used to help determine what area of the world you are at and pointing out with the compass. But what also made this quite interesting, and hence the name of night side, is this watch actually has a backlit face, meaning when you push down on the time column, in this case, the light, there would be a light that would come on. And from what I remember, it was a greenish color. It wasn't really bright as the batteries in the back did eventually go out, but it was quite neat. In my history of owning this watch, this was gifted to me by my dad who received it from his parents. He remembers it originally had a leather pouch that would strap onto a belt and it would be carried that way. In my case, I didn't have the pouch. Instead, I took a shoestring that I found somewhere, wrapped it around the end of the chain loop, and just carried it around. I was probably about five or six years old when I got this watch, and as you can see, it has been well worn. At one point in time, it was left in a pair of pants pockets and got into a washer and even a dryer and ended up getting chipped, the crystal getting chipped a little bit. But miraculously, as you can see, it still works to this day. The next pocket watch in line is this little gold and silver piece right here, which interestingly has a side face on the inside. So let's take a deeper look into it. Not too long after getting the very first pocket watch, I got this little thing. One day when I was going through my local Walmart, I went past the watch section and I found this little thing. It is really the first railroad related pocket watch that I actually got with a standard pattern on the face of the watch that is still even made to this day and you can get in many many different types of stores to this day even at Walmart themselves and this watch I got around as well about five or six years old and this is actually the second one the first one accidentally had a minor accident where it can no longer be used and I felt so bad and so did my mom that she ended up going and taking me back to Walmart and getting me this one now this watch is a little bit interesting. I have unfortunately misplaced the chain. Then again, this is a watch that I've had since I was a toddler. And so I've also lost the cap to the top part of the watch. So you kind of got to dig in. And this watch is a little interesting in that it too is also a quartz battery operated watch. Nothing fancy, not a mechanical, it doesn't have a unique face, but it does have nice Japanese movement that keeps time pretty good. And what was interesting besides it being a upright vertical face, it was instead a horizontal face. I had never seen something like that before. And on top of that, it also had a small little date. So with one click, you could change the time, but also, let me see if I can do it. You can also change the date. As you can see, it is a 31 day system and can change the time automatically. Quite interesting and it was a good, pretty good watch that I carried everywhere for most of my childhood. 
after the trains, we are now getting into something a little different. In this case, this is a Titanic themed pocket watch. Also, it is the first pocket watch with a chain in the collection. And let's go ahead and take a closer look. Taking a closer look at the third pocket watch in the line, and it is my first Titanic pocket watch. I got this back in 2012 at the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which you can still visit to this day. Fortunately, they don't make this version of the pocket watch anymore, as it is a quite an old rendition of it, but they do make some form of fashion. This is a standard pocket watch you can find and manufactured by a classic pocket watch or one of those vintage lines that you can get at most um, tour shops of any form or fashion and really anything. It's still also a battery operated pocket watch with a nice little vintage collection face in this case. The battery unfortunately died in this one like a few like most of the batteries in my watches simple quartz movement most of these watches are and also has the roman numerals name overall this was one of the main pocket watches that i wore and had at for the longest time actually because at one point in time i did enjoy collecting titanic replicas of artifacts and also just anything titanic related and this was one of the major items since i already had two pocket watches fan of trains, I would figured it would just be perfect to have a Titanic pocket watch. So I wore this to school and back, was probably the only student that had a chain on his pants and not for an odd reason, but in this case because I was, how should I put it, sophisticated in the world of pocket watches. In this case, you can see it still has its original t chain and honestly is a great runner. Next, we have a little bit of gold coming in, in this case, going back to the trains and yet again, a unique piece of chain. In this case, it still works to this day. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Going back to trains and into something a little bit more flashy. Here we have a, what you would think of a pocket watch, in this case, a conductor's pocket watch. In that case, a standard gold locomotive up front on the face of the pocket watch. And in this case, it too is just a standard quartz pocket watch. As you can see, this one actually does have a battery in it with a simple crystal and is well used. This pocket watch I, I purchased by myself around 2015 at the Casey Jones Roto Museum in Jackson, Tennessee, where his actual home that he owned and lived in at the time of his death in, 19, in April of 1900. And I figured, well, I wanted something to remember myself by. And when I first saw this pocket watch, I was like, oh my goodness, this is the most beautiful pocket watch I have ever seen at that time. And especially the chain. The chain is unique from anything that I have and is a telescopic-like piece. Instead of a link piece, it is just such a unique kind of serpentine collapsible chain that I had never seen before. If I remember correctly, I paid like $45 for this little watch, something that I haven't seen in a long time. I really haven't seen any form of this type of tooling before in other stores, but it was quite a nice little piece that keeps good time. And as you can see, works very smoothly. And similar to the Titanic watch, I wore this everywhere to the point where most of the raised areas have been rubbed off of their gold paint and is now the true copper-like brass that's underneath it. But I still wear this watch to this day, and it is quite a good little piece that I own. Next up, we have something a little bit more popular and also an auction bind, find, and it is this little red beauty, which also has a nice face on the inside. So let's take a closer look. Next up, we have something that is a little bit more colorful, and it is the Lionel Santa Fe F three unit pocket watch. This watch is not something you would see every day. This was one of Lionel's many, and I mean many, collector items. This was actually accompanied by a Santa Fe F three pocket knife and also came in a blue velvet pouch. I purchased this from a local train club auction that is held every year and in this case i actually had to fight over this with the person who actually purchased the knife the guy wanted to complete the set but not bad enough that i wanted this watch a little bit more and as a result i was able to get this watch fortunately i don't remember exactly when i got it nor do i remember how much it was but i do remember it wasn't the greatest watch in the world 
On the inside, it does have a nice face. It's the full photo of the front lid and also has some nice thin silver hands. However, those set hands actually got stuck. At one point in time when the hands would go around the face of the clock, it would eventually get stuck on each other. So my dad and I had to get creative, take the back off, peel the face back a little bit, and do some surgery onto the hands of the face. And as a result, the watch is not really well used by me nowadays. It is more of a collector's item that I keep around because, well, it's just so pretty with that iconic war bonnet, red, yellow, and black with the silver striping, and really keeps a good story. Moving out of your normal pocket watches, we are getting into the narrow gauge section with this Colorado Rotor Museum established in the 1959 pocket watch from the Heritage Collection. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. Taking a closer look at our sixth pocket watch in the list, in this case, it is going back to that vintage collection lineup. And in this case, it is the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado. If you have been following Heise's channel, which covers a variety of wonderful train stories, as well as Colorado narrow gauge locomotives and rolling stock, and also the video game Rail Railroads Online, he would be quite familiar with the Colorado State Railroad Museum. This pocket watch I got, oh, probably many, many years ago, maybe nearly 10 years ago now that I think about it, at the Colorado State Railroad Museum when I was at a youth camp in Estes Park, Colorado. After the camp was over, my parents and I, instead of just going straight back home in Texas, we decided to take a little detour. First, we went and visited the Golden Colorado um, Road Museum, rode on the goose and actually got a behind the scenes of number seven of inside the cab of the motor car. And while I was at it, I also got to go and ride a few other things in the area, such as the Royal Gorge route through the Royal Gorge in Colorado. Very fun trip. But back to the watch itself, as you can see, we have one of the Fable locomotives on the front, a K-class locomotive. It looks like maybe a K-27 Please don't murder me in the comments. I am not proficient in the narrow gauge world. And as you can see, similar to the Titanic pocket watch, it has that standard vintage collection face, silver hands, and Roman numerals. As you can also see, the battery is dead in this watch. But from what I remember when I used it, it was a good running watch like the Titanic one and looks pretty well detailed with the face. Moving away from standard size pocket watches, we come to this little charm. In this case, it is a Washington DC charm necklace pocket watch, and it's quite interesting. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. Changing gears with number six, and it is this little darling. Now you may say, well, this isn't a pocket watch. This is a pendant watch, and you would be correct. This is really not a pocket watch per se, but it is a little interesting thing that I have in my collection. As you can see, it is a Washington DC Heritage pocket watch, again, from the vintage collection. I have a number of that brand of pocket watches in my collection because they're just so popular in different places and they also create quite unique little designs on the face of the lids. In this case, you can see it's a necklace chain haven't really used this watch that very much. It's not a, an, it's an unusual pocket watch that I don't wear and use very often because it is a pendant watch. I had thought about changing the, <clears throat> excuse me, changing the chain to a standard pocket watch chain, but really haven't gotten to it. Looking on the inside, as you can see, it is the smallest face of a pocket watch in my collection. In this case, it's still that quartz action battery operated face and movement on the inside, but just a little bit smaller. In this case, the battery has died long, long ago. And I got this watch from my mother. She took my grandmother to visit Washington, D.C. for the first time for her 70th birthday. She was getting up to an age where it was really a go for it or never at all point of moment. And she was kind enough to think of me when she saw this watch and was able to bring it home back to Texas. So I'm very grateful for her, and it is probably the unique, most unique watch in my collection, just ba purely based on its size. Going back to theoretical trains, in this case, we have yet another Lionel pocket watch. In this case, I 
It is a nice little gold finished one and is quite nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Watch number seven, taking a closer look. In this case, we are back into the gold. In this case, also back into the Lionel selection. As stated earlier, Lionel created so many different types of heritage or kind of commemorative, never gonna be reproduced, rare pocket watches, when in reality, they made hundreds of these. I mean, you can find this watch anywhere online for pennies on the dollar and they were actually quite cool for their time. They were produced in the 1990s. And in this case, I got this watch similar to the other one by a trend club member. And in this case, really haven't used it very much. At first I thought it was quite unique and interesting and I could not wait to go and put a battery into it, S especially since the second hand is the Lionel train style. Instead of there being a standard gold hand that would come out and tick around the face of the watch instead the little disc would just go around and it kept decent time it would get a minute ahead every once in a while but what made this watch even more unique and exciting to me at the point in time was the back as you can see the back has these little itty bitty holes in the back plate and those holes were actually for a speaker inside this watch if you push down the little dial knob on the top instead of a lid popping out it instead was operating a speaker. So Lionel went ahead and designed the watch or some manufacturer outside of Lionel that they hired to go and make these watches, put a little miniature sound system to recreate some form of a train going by and whatnot. But unfortunately, this is the 1990s, so things didn't go quite well. And the first time I pushed that button, yeah, let's just say nothing train related came out of this thing so unfortunately I don't keep any batteries in here anymore as the board has fried itself or to a point the sound system has gone bad but the watch itself works pretty good. Keeping with the fantasy theme and also gold we have this little charm in this case it is the fabled Polar Express pocket watch so let's take a closer look. Number eight, not crazy eight. In this case, we have yet another gold pocket watch. I got this from 2017 at the Bryson City, North Carolina Railroad Museum or the Great Smoky Mountains Railroad Museum's gift shop. In this case, it was November, so Thanksgiving time where Christmas stuff comes out. And in this case, they had a ton, and I mean a ton of Polar Express items since they do have a Polar Express themed train ride through the Great Smoky Mountains. In this case, for many years, I always wanted a Polar Express themed pocket watch, and I finally did get one. In this case, it's not as nice as the Lionel version that Lionel made back in 2017 as well, or even 2015, as a matter of fact, that had a much thinner design, not this thick, bulgy, gold, fake gold looking piece. It was more of the pocket watch number seven kind of gold, more realistic looking, but it was well into the $100 range nowadays, even into the two to $300 range, way, way too much money. So I decided, well, let's just go ahead and get something a little different. In this case, I, this watch is somewhat true to the actual prototype in the movie. In this case, it has a, lot, a molding of the Lionel Polar Express Berkshire Jr. on the front with Believe and the Polar Express around it. And then on the inside, we have that iconic on time about late, bit late, December 24th in the early section that you see in the movie. The main watch hand or the printed on watch hand is barely on time, but about late, never want to be late, especially for the conductor. And from what I remember, it was a good little watch. I enjoyed having it in my collection. And it's nice to have a little pocket watch from a movie that you grew up with. Going back to the museum or heritage theme, we have this little baby. This is again, another vintage antique era pocket watch. In this case, the Dollywood Express. So let's take a closer look. Watch number nine and going back to the vintage collection lineup. Here we have yet another dullish kind of silverish graphite gray pocket watch. And in this case, it yet again has another iconic locomotive on the front from another iconic location. In this case, it is the Dollywood Express from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. If you haven't seen my video back in March 
of this year of me going and visiting Dollywood, you, I would recommend going and watching that as I take us along a journey on board the Dollywood Express in the springtime of the Great Smoky Mountains, a beautiful time to go and visit the place. But anyway, back to the watch itself. Here you can see we have a nice detailed locomotive and tender with a passenger car of some sort going towards the rear. Looks like it's coming around a bend and an iconic image that you would see along at the theme park itself. In this case, I cannot completely tell what kind of locomotive is on the front. It has some remnants of Klondike Katy or engine number 192, but then again, it also has some similarities of number 70 Cinderella. So really it's just kind of a hodgepodge of the looks of both locomotives and like the like all the other pocket watches from this collection as you can see it has that standard roman numeral silver hands and it too also has a dead battery in this case it's a quartz standard battery operated pocket watch quite a nice little piece for years Dollywood never had a pocket watch available for the Dollywood Express so when I first saw this back when I got it I was like yep I'll give you my money, you give me that watch, and we'll all be happy. Coming down to the last row, we have this bronze baby, which was actually gifted to me by another trained friend. And as you can see, it is quite unique. So let's go and take a deeper dive at it. For pocket watch number 10, we kind of change things a little up and go into a bronze age. This pocket watch was a gift from, or not a gift, but was actually given to me by a friend of mine that I... Uh, borrow most of his engines for when I do product reviews and this was gifted to him as well as you can see it's just a made in China pocket watch with some type of European or other kind of generic steam locomotive on the front and he doesn't really have any use for it it came actually in a nice wooden box which is somewhere in storage right now but really was a nice little watch something a little bit different um says Japan made so it does have a it does have a quartz movement made from Japan but is made in China weird kind of combination but as you can see on the face it is quite different with that ribbed gold bronze face but also normal letters with black hands that have got some scroll work on it quite a beautiful watch I hadn't really gotten to use this watch very often as you can tell by the battery being dead but when I did use it it was quite a nice little piece just something to change things up from the gold to the plaque and bronze that I've had in the past and that I've shown you but yeah quite a nice little watch to have as a filler and quite nice detail Moving out of the field of battery powered, we get into my only mechanical powered watch. In this case, it is yet another eBay find. And as you can see, it is quite interesting. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. Coming to the last three pocket watches and probably the next top three pocket watches that I own in my collection. And this is number 11. So out of all the pocket watches we have seen so far, every single one of them have all been not mechanically operated like the originals, but instead were all battery operated. And at this point in time, when I, per when I got this watch for, Chris for the Christmas of, when was that? 2021. So I've had this watch for about a year and a half now. I really wanted a mechanical watch. I've seen some great things, some great beauty from the mechanical watches, but Typically, they were either too expensive for an original mechanical watch, say from the 1930s, or even an original railroad pocket watch. They would cost up to, oh, say, three to three to five hundred dollars if you were crazy enough for even something that isn't working. I decided to go onto eBay and I found this little gem for about twenty dollars. It is an actual working mechanical pocket watch. As you can see, I've kept it wound up since this time. It lasts about 48 hours, which is pretty good for a cheap watch like this. Beautiful back crystal to view all of the wonderful gearing on the inside. And as you can see on the front, it has a basic train on the front. But really, the genuine beauty is on the inside. Here you can see the face is a beautiful bronze let Roman numeral lettering with a back and white black and white background face but also a center cutout to go and see through the back into the mechanism of the watch I when I first got this watch I knew I was going to be staring at it for hours in reality I have been it is a wonderful watch 
Though it keeps time a little bit faster than the other watches, it's still a nice, good quality, somewhat quality watch for $20 off of eBay, especially for it being a mechanical watch. Going back to battery powered, we have this little shiny beauty, in which this case, it is the only one of the few open face watches that I have, and also one of the few that have an actual date on the inside. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look. For number 12, we're coming back into the battery world, but probably one of the most high quality watches I have ever owned. In this case, it is a Gotham pocket watch, but not just any type of pocket watch. In this case, this was a specialty run railroad pocket watch, railway classic pocket watch from Gotham, and it is for the Nevada Northern Railway. If you've seen some of my short videos a couple years ago, or now actually a year ago in May last year, I went and visited the fabled Nevada Northern Railway in Ely, Nevada. In the middle of nowhere, there is a vintage railway that has been preserved, well preserved, in just the middle of nowhere. It was used for a copper mine. They have three steam locomotives, two of which are working. Number 40 is currently being under restoration right now. She hadn't been restored in a long, long time. But while I was there, and while I was looking at their website, I came across this little pocket watch, and I'm like, I know I already have a lot of pocket watches, but I don't have a really good high-quality watch from a place that I've actually driven a real steam locomotive at. In this case, I decided to go ahead and purchase the Gotham Nevada Northern Railway pocket watch, and this watch has seen a lot of use. As you can see in this, with all the scratches on the back face, I've been wearing this watch almost non-stop ever since I got it. It is such a high quality watch, the weight of it alone tells you how quality it is. The watch, I've never had to replace a battery after a year, nearly a year and a half since I've turned it on. It has a wonderful date stamp and the face itself is just beautifully so crisp and nice. And the crystal itself, if you look at it just right, is just a nice, beautiful bevel. Such a wonderful watch. If you ever get to go to the Nevada Northern Railway and you're looking for a pocket watch, don't pass this up. It's a wonderful watch and I've always enjoyed wearing it. And finally, coming to the very last pocket watch, we have this interesting one. Again, it is not a train related item, but instead is a heritage Titanic version. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look on this final watch. And for the final watch, in this case, this is actually number 14. The last watch was actually 13. I had miscounted all this time, unfortunately. So in total, my collection spans a, t a number of 14 pocket watches with a pendant watch somewhere in the middle. So technically, this is watch num pocket watch number 13, but watch number 14 overall in my collection. So half right, half incorrect. But enough chatting about how many pocket watches I have. Let's go straight into the watch itself. This has been the last pocket watch I've purchased as of recently. As you can see, it is a specialty pocket watch and also not a train watch. It is another Titanic pocket watch. I first saw this back in last year when the Titanic was celebrating its 100th, 110th anniversary at the Titanic Museum in Pigeon Forge where I got my last pocket watch. And the artwork was so beautiful and the nice look of the outer casing of the watch itself was so beautiful as well. And then on top of that, you could see in the reflection, the head of a JFK half dollar. So what they actually did was they took a JFK half dollar, cut it to size, and then, also, and then put the painting on top of it, which was so unique. I had never seen something like this before, especially in a Titanic pocket watch. So I figured, Let's go ahead and splurge a little bit. As you can see, this is a meant to be a commemorative pocket watch for the 100th anniversary, so 1912 to 2012. And I was very surprised that they still had some of these pocket watches still available. But then again, they were also still selling the other vintage uh, line that I have as well. So it could have been very easily to just go and be persuaded to buy the cheaper pocket watch instead of this one, especially this one I think was about $60 when I purchased it. And quite honestly, that is a very expensive watch considering you're going to a tourist destination. But as you can see the face, nothing special, just standard. A standard face with a quartz Japanese movement, black hands, similar to the other pocket watches we've seen. But yeah, I couldn't pass up another Titanic pocket watch, especially something this beautiful with that JFK coin in the center. So yeah, 
such a great pocket watch and if you can find any get one for yourself well that's it for my pocket watch collection video as a total there was a total of 14 watches in all 13 if you discredit the little pendant watch right here and as you can see it is quite a variety of watches everything from something you would get at a gift store to something a little bit more high end and somewhere in between really i hope you enjoyed all this this nice little video i thought it would be nice to get something a little bit different out there for you all to enjoy and really I haven't seen anything else done like this before. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button so that I know that you actually did enjoy this video. And while you're at it, if you'd like to no longer miss any of my future videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button as that will add you to my subscriber count and will also allow you to get notifications from my channel when I add new videos all the time. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.